Welcome to day four of the Hoop Scoop Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. At number 97, we have the George Mason Patriots. What's up, college basketball fans? I'm Hoop Scoop Media co-founder Austin Getchy, and welcome to the Hoop Scoop Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. In this series, we'll be counting down our top 100 teams for next season and releasing a video every day until the college basketball season begins. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our social medias a follow. Simple things like that help more college basketball fans like you enjoy our content. With that being said, enjoy the rest of the video and 99 other videos in this series. George Mason was another school that underwent a coaching change this offseason, but I'm not convinced they came out on the bad side of the deal. On March 22nd, Providence hired the George Mason coach at the time, Kim English, who, despite being a potential rising star in industry, had yet to accomplish anything substantial at George Mason. On March 30th, the Patriots hired Tony Skin, who was a Maryland assistant, to be their head coach. Skin was a key player on the George Mason team that made the Final Four, and in my opinion, he's already built a better roster than English's teams. While Skin has built a good roster, he had to do so largely from scratch. With the departure of English, Josh Oduro, Devontae Gaines, and Justin Fernandez followed to Providence. Devon Cooper and Victor Bailey Jr., both were double-digit scores, exhausted their eligibility. Skin hit the portal hard this offseason, the biggest addition being Virginia Tech transfer Darius Maddox. Maddox dealt with injuries this season and didn't live up to the breakout star potential that he was billed at, but a fully healthy Maddox will be one of the premier players in the A-10. Another addition with lots of potential is UNLV transfer Keyshawn Hall, who skinned out over a number of high majors. While Hall didn't see extensive minutes at UNLV, he put up good numbers in a few minutes he got. He is a player who I could and think will break out this year with the minutes that he gets. Skin also got two high-level transfers that likely won't be eligible in Jalen Haynes and Woody Newton. Both could make major impacts in the conference with a waiver, but it's probably safe to assume that they won't get one as two-time transfers who have not graduated. The starting big man is likely to be UNC Wilmington transfer Amari Kelly. Kelly had a decent season last year where he proved himself to be a high-level defender and rebounder. It's his second stint in the conference, as he formerly played for Duquesne. The three other transfers Skin brought to George Mason were Jared Billups, Trey Wood, and Nicholas Pavret. They figure to play bench roles, although they will likely see some playing time and could contribute. The starting point guard for the Patriots figures to be Ronald Polite, who entered the portal this offseason but decided to withdraw. Polite is one of the best passers in the conference, and he should be able to rack up assists with the weapons he has around him. Malik Henry and Devin Dinkins, who were both role players last year, returned to George Mason. Henry is in line for a big role, with Haynes and Newton, who would likely play ahead of him, not likely to be eligible. Dinkins, a point guard, could also be in for a jump, as he was only a freshman last year and it's very common for players to have a big increase in production in their sophomore season. Skin also has a few freshmen going into his inaugural season at George Mason. Austin Ball was a commit under Kim English and decided to stay at George Mason even with the coaching change. He's a three-star shooting guard who could be a good player over the next few years. The other freshman is Braka Okoji, who reclassed from 2024 to 2023 when he committed. Okoji is a point guard who chose the Patriots over other good mid-majors who should turn into an impactful player in the long term. As far as play style goes, Skin has been on the record saying the Patriots will be playing a fast style of basketball and giving offensive players freedom, something that fits in well with the pieces, especially Maddox, that are on the roster. He's also made it clear that his team will get after on defense, implementing a 2-2-1 press. These combines should make for some entertaining basketball this year in George Mason. Right now, I have George Mason fourth in the A-10 and in contention for a potential auto bid. I love what Tony Skin did this offseason, and I fully expect him to climb higher on this list as the seasons go by. His first offseason has been extremely promising, recruiting at a higher level than English really ever did. The only concern for skeptics is that Skin doesn't have head coaching experience, although I have a lot of confidence this was the right hire. George Mason fans, let me know what your thoughts are about the video and the hire of Skin, and where you'd have them in your own personal rankings. We will be back tomorrow for number 96 team in the nation. Before you go, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications to stay up to date on these videos.